Hey guys, I'm Combat Craig, and today's question is, are you stuck with a 94% VA disability rating? I'm going to show you a veteran's disability list that uh, calculates up to a 94% VA disability rating, and then that's obviously rounded down to uh, 90% using VA math. I've gone ahead and uh, double-checked all this stuff, and I think this is a good example because a lot of you guys... Um, have things like this, a good smattering of not service connected, some low ball ratings, some decent ratings, and it's just kind of all over the board. And you're thinking, all right, I'm uh, at 94%. You know, what do I need and what should I do and and, and where do I go, right? So um, that that's basically the question he's asking. How do I get a 100% VA disability rating and what's the best course of action? So we're going to go ahead and uh, look at his disabilities. This probably looks familiar. A uh, little bit of everything. Um, hiatal hernia and GERD um, are actually the same thing. That's common to have the same thing. One not service connected and one that says GERD. It actually shouldn't say GERD. It should say hi hiatal hernia. Uh, but it depends on how you write it up. A lot of these things, they just go in the way you write them up uh, however many years ago. Uh, that's going to be one of my recommendations, so maybe that'll get fixed. But as you can see, he's got lots of uh, orthopedic conditions. He's got some bilaterals in his left and right carpal tunnel. He's got um, plantar fasciitis, uh, lumbar strain, uh, pes planus. Uh, got got something on his left foot for ten, and then he's got his uh, Achilles. Uh, tendonitis, left ankle as a secondary, eczema, and a few other items. So I went ahead and printed this thing out so um, it would be a little easier to sit here and talk through it with you. So let's swap, up, swap over to that screen. So service-connected disabilities, the, the highest one he has is obstructive sleep apnea, and I just kind of uh, threw them kind of in, not in any order, just kind of by the rating. So, um, you know, left knee sprain, right knee sprain, bilateral, um, Achilles tendonitis, 20, rotator cuff, uh, bilateral pes planus left foot, plantar fasciitis, that's 10. Um, that's also what I had, uh, just for shits and giggles. Lumbar strain, GERD at 10, tinnitus at 10, right ankle tendonitis at 10, left and right carpal tunnel here at 10. So let's look at some of the uh, not service-connected disabilities. And you might have a bunch of these things, and uh, that's why I'm making this. I want you guys to think about this stuff and uh, look for the path of least resistance and make sure um, you nail it. And I would also say um, make sure that you've gone to the doctor for all of your service-connected disabilities. That would be this list right here. Um, at least once in the last year, make sure you've gone, got everything checked out uh, and made a complaint or whatever. Um, if any of these things um, are increasable, uh, you should have been uh, complaining. So you're building your claim, um, building your case so you can increase it. So that's another thing to uh, think about. You know, you can you can file an intent to file now and work on your medical evidence and, and warrant your increase. Um, but uh, if this if this guy was uh, um, complaining and went after some of these things, he could do an increase all on his own because he doesn't need a nexus. He doesn't need to establish service connection. Those things are already done. He's already service connected. He just needs the severity of the symptoms documented. And um, if he was making his complaints in his VHA medical records, uh, that could be enough for sure. Um, so let's look at the not service connected disabilities. Uh, we got a uh, hernia hiatal. Like I said, that, that actually is GERD, uh, liver condition. Uh, I, I don't know much about that. I wouldn't mess with it. Hearing loss is a loser. Uh, right foot bone spur and right foot plantar fasciitis interest me, um, on a secondary basis. So let's uh, talk through this. So he needs 10%. So the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to go for an increase, right? 
Secondary service connections are also easy, but then you're going to need a diagnosis of a condition and you're going to need a uh, nexus linking the condition to something that's already service connected. We'll talk through that a little bit, but um, I would go for an increase on uh, hiatal hernia, aka GERD, and call it a day. Warranted, his symptoms are worse, right? He's got 10%. Uh, GERD goes up, I think it's uh, 0, 10, 30, and 60. 30 is a pretty common GERD rating. 60 is an extremely high GERD rating. Not sure what the severity of the symptoms are, but uh, that would be the easiest thing to do. And then um, the second uh, route that I would go, as you're looking through this list, lots of orthopedic conditions. Obstructive sleep apnea is uh, the, really the only the high value claim, you know, 30% or above or high value claims, 30% or lower or low value claims. I'm not saying that all these 20s and 10s don't add up. They obviously do. Uh, but he only has one high value claim in here. You know, what's missing? Um, I don't see any IBS. I see GERD. That is a high value claim, but he's got a low rating for it. So I don't see IBS. I don't see anything about uh, headaches, migraines, and I see no mental health rating whatsoever. So that is the first place that I would uh, look at, you know, a mental health claim for depression and or anxiety and or insomnia and or somatic symptom disorder. When you're dealing with this much uh, pain with these sprains and ankles and tears and plantar fasciitis hurts, I've, I've got that. He could actually do an increase on his left foot plantar fasciitis and get that to 20 like I got mine to 20. That, that would do it, too. He's got a lot of options. Um, so let, let me throw that into the uh, possible increase list, too. Just increasing his, his left foot up to 20 might work. Um, so uh, mental health, um, th this is why mental health claims um, exist, to pick up and to clean up. Um, these types of claims, because you need to account for how all these things in your body that screw you up and they impact your social and your work life. I mean, he's at 94 percent, very severe uh, conditions here. So he could lob in a mental health claim and, um, you know, that would get him 50, 70 percent right there. Uh, headaches, uh, depending if he has them or not, obviously, you have to have this stuff. So. When I go back to mental health, you know, if he doesn't have an anxiety or depression, but he has insomnia, then file for insomnia. I know he has chronic pain. That's obviously clear. So somatic symptom disorder would be a no brainer. But when you go to a board certified psychologist, you want them to uh, get out and diagnose all your mental health conditions. So you have them all in case that needs to be increased in the future. Um, IBS is probably another one that he's uh, suffering from uh, because of the meds. GERD and IBS have uh, overlapping conditions, but they are two separately rateable uh, items. So he could um, get another 30% for his uh, GERD. So that's kind of my uh, breakdown of it. Um, other things that he might want to be uh, thinking about are, uh, you know, he's going to be, once he gets to 100%, uh, depending on his age, at some point, you know, they might give him 100% permanent in total. I would think if he, you know, shoots way over it and gets a 70% mental health rating and gets an increase going. Uh, again, I wouldn't do five claims. I'd probably do two, three max, you know, don't make this difficult. And, and I would obviously go the path of least resistance you know, I might even start off with just increasing the GERD if he's got the symptoms to back it up and increase the uh, plantar fasciitis on the left, left foot if his symptoms are worse. And that's documented in his VA records or private records. Uh, other things to think about are, you know, what's, uh, what's his uh, social life like? What's his work life like? Um, if he's just suffering through and unable to work, Another thing to think about is Social Security disability insurance. You know, if he's had a job, he meets the uh, right right criteria, this might be a good uh, Social Security disability insurance claim. So he's currently at 94% single veteran. I think you're getting paid uh, around two grand, 1900 or something like that at 90%. Um, 
bump that up to 100. That would put him at 31, depending on how much he's paying into Social Security. I use uh, Social Security Disability Insurance average, 1300, 1400 bucks for, you know, most people that, you know, make 80 grand a year kind of thing, 60 grand a year and, you know, have all the work credits and fit into the grid system and all that kind of stuff. So um, layering in a Social Security disability claim could put him at, you know, 4500 bucks a month. And uh, that might be enough for him to live on. Unless, of course, he lives in California or in downtown Manhattan. And then I would suggest moving to Idaho or Montana or Wyoming or, you know, somewhere cheaper, somewhere north and colder. And uh, you can live on 4500 bucks, um, you know, on Social Security disability and your VA disability. Um, so uh, just wanted to kind of run through this little scenario with you. I got my little cabin here. See the little heart? I love you guys. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.